a new model. So this is what we want to build in Maya. And uh, so let me show a couple of videos, a few videos, of some research that we're doing in this space. Um, so first of all, we've added Sculpting to Maya 2016, and, uh, which debuted just a few, few months ago. Um, and so with, with Sculpting in Maya now, you can, of course, you can sculpt uh, just any freeform random, random object like this. But the problem with sculpting a static topology is that as you keep pulling on it, you start running out of polygons. So what you really need is an adaptive topology, one that you can pull out in infinitely, and you can even mer merge back into yourself. You want a topology that can, you can add things to and subtract, use objects to, to subtract from. You want to be able to just cut away at it easily. You want to be able to plot a curve to define, uh, to define a line and uh, then use that curve to shape, um, shape that, that hard edge. And you want to be able to use that curve also to chip away at the cube, for example, in that case. And, and remember, that now you're, you're still in Maya, so you have your lattices and your bend deformers and whatever else you want to be using uh, to shape your, your model. OK, so th this, is, this is the basic uh, tool set here. Uh, let's look at it applied to a, a little bit different scenario here with this, uh, this silly looking tree uh, that, I, that we're pulling out of a plane. And uh, you can see that you can, with adaptive topology, you can just keep pulling and without running out of polygons. And then you can sculpt it out. But the, we're, it's still in, embedded in a plane here. We want it separated from the planes. So we use a pair of uh, virtual scissors and cut it out from that plane. And then we want to add, extend the roots a little bit. So we just add, just plop on some more clay, so to speak, and uh, just extend it. And uh, we use another object to kind of cut a, cut a hole into it uh, there. And then again at the top. And then we bring in some reality capture rocks and, and then a procedural rock also to kind of uh, craft the scene. And because we're in Maya, we can use the great uh, joint and rigging systems uh, uh, that Maya provides to kind of pose these roots uh, to conform them to the rock surface. And again, because we're in Maya, we have access to the entire um, lighting and, and, and camera animation suite that uh, Maya provides. So you're working in context, making better decisions about your models. And the last video, um, this one's more of a character focus. Uh, again, just kind of sculpting regularly. But because I have adapt I'm using adaptive topology, I can zoom in and put the, put the resolution in the detail where I want it. So in this case, I have the head's low resolution, but I'm adding more, more resolution to the eye so I can define that more, uh, more carefully. And I can tuck the eyelids back up into the, into the skull. And here I'm exploring a couple different mouths. I, I, I scrub away what I don't like and, and, and model a new, a new mouth. And then I place, and I need this mouth to be functional, so I use my scissors again and kind of cut, cut open the lips here in a second so that the mouth can be expressive and, and animate. And then I, I, want, I need a nose, so I just plop some more clay on there and uh, shape the, this clay into to a nose, merging it back into the, to the head. And then I, I, want, I need an ear, but ear's one of those things where the complexity of its form doesn't really, uh, isn't really proportional to the, to the effort and the labor that it requires to sculpt it. So in this case, I'm just going to grab from a, a library of reality captured scanned ears and just plop it into my head, and that's going to be good enough. So, and and I, it's a little elf, so I'm going to tweak the, the corner a little bit. And then I'm going to pull out the neck and, uh, and shoulders, and I could keep going with the body, but um, for now, this, this is going to do. So what if we applied this same idea of, of high resolution sculpting to, to hair? Uh, maybe you could, um, could, just, could just comb the hair directly with the, with the same sort of brushes. So this is, these are some things that we're prototyping and exploring in, in Maya. And uh, so we, with that, we would have you know, a, a tool set for crafting the technical representation of a model, handcrafting the technical representation, and a tool set for handcrafting the visual or aesthetic representation of your model. The problem is, I still have a problem, that pro problem is quantity and, is the pro quantity and quality problem. And uh, uh, the, the problem is I, I, I can't afford to handcraft every model and every aspect of my model. Um, and that brings us to the third stage in the evolution of modeling tools, which, is, which are tools that see a model the way that our brain sees it. Our brains are wonderful things. They're able to pick out letters from that noisy background and make sense of the words in, in a semantic way. And so in the same way, this is about bringing more sophistication to our tool set and, 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 and to what the tools can see and do with, with what they see. So instead of just seeing vertices and digital matter, maybe we're able to see a tree or a bolt. And uh, so operating more on, a, on the semantic representation of the model uh, at a higher level, raising the artist to, that, to the role of a director, and kind of exploding the concept of resolution. Uh, resolution becomes just an output option, a slider. And I, I, so I think a great illustration for how this will work is the old master's atelier or, or workshop of assistants and apprentices. 
in this case, Peter Paul Rubens, a very prolific painter who had a, a, a large uh, workshop. And he was, his workshop was staffed with, staffed with assistants that helped with technical uh, tasks like stretching canvas or, or varnishing the painting. And also assistants that helped with creative tasks like maybe painting some of the background characters or, or some specialists that specialized in, in painting trees or clouds. And there are two, two important points I want to make about this workshop concept, which is uh, not, it's not that Rubens didn't care about clouds or trees or stretching canvas. It's that he cared more about, he, he, he wanted to focus his time, his efforts on other aspects, the aspects that his client valued more, uh, the faces and the hands, for example. And secondly, the second thing I want to, the point I want to make is that at any stage, it's, it's Rubens' workshop, at any stage he could go in there, grab the paintbrush away from the assistant and get exactly what he wanted, to, wanted from, from the, uh, for, for the painting. Okay, so what does this have to do with modeling? Of course, advances in machine learning and AI and compute, uh, through the compute, massive compute power through the cloud and so forth are bringing us to a tipping point where I think it's gonna, where there's going to be a fundamental change in modeling. And, and so there, I'm gonna, let's look at two examples of ways that um, even today modelers are, are already tasting what it's like to collaborate with the computer. Uh, on, and we'll start with a technical task, which is, which is uh, creating um, topology for for your models and um, the algorithms that there already exist algorithms algorithms today that are doing a good enough task of creating of creating topology that's good enough for some assets for film and games um, and and by by invoking this term good enough i don't want to sound like i'm a champion of mediocrity again the point here is not that uh the point here is not that um that we're settling for good enough it, it, the point is that we're, it enables us as modelers to focus on areas of greater value. Uh, and, and so the point is that we're making more powerful models by focusing our time and effort on, on the things of greater value. And, and also remember, you're not just giving up computer, uh, you're not just giving up control blank, blankly to the computer. Uh, you can at any point arrest control from the computer and get exactly what you want. That's actually where the algorithms kind of struggle today. Um, and, and so we'll see some progress in, the, in that front in the future. Okay, cre uh, collaborating creatively with the, with the computer. Uh, one example of that is through the generation of vegetation, uh, of which there are various tools on the market today already. And these operate at more of a semantic level. Um, you know, it's changing the number of branches, changing the number of leaves. Why do we use these tools? Again, like the ear, trees are, are complicated and, and uh, they just aren't, sometimes just aren't worth the investment uh, the, the complexity of their structure just isn't worth the investment up front to, to handcraft. Um, and, and so having assistance there would, is, is, um, uh, it makes, is, 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 is a good, is a good trade-off. As with retopology algorithms, the artist needs to step in at any point and arrest control away from the uh, computer to get exactly what he wants sometimes. And this is exactly what, um, uh, where, where, where we need to kind of progress in, in our, in, in, in these tools and these algorithms. And there are several different approaches uh, to generation that we're looking at at our desk. There is, uh, oops, sorry guys, uh, proceduralism. So we're building models on, uh, building models from the, from the ground up using on a, on a network of nodes, a base of nodes. There's also uh, kind of more, more of a top-down approach where you're able to bring in different examples and synthesize them together to make a, uh, a new result. And, and there's also machine learning with, uh, coupled with big data to uh, provide uh, more, uh, uh, to, to be able to synthesize new models based on uh, a vast library of existing, existing parts. So th that's, this, is the tool set, this is the vision for the modeling tool set that we want to build in Maya. And we're investing in each layer because each layer is important. Professional, mo professional modelers will always need to uh, craft, handcraft the technical qualities and handcraft the aesthetic qualities untangled from the vertices. And uh, we will also need to be able to operate at that higher level to focus on those aspects of the model that the artist and the client care about the most. So I'm, I'm product manager of the modeling team, but, uh, and, and I, I tell my team, uh, we're, we're the modeling team, but we're not making tools for modelers, we're take, making tools for artists. And I think this is an important point, point because the modelers of yesterday are not the modelers of today. Technology changes, skills change. But one thing remains, and, and that is the power of a good model to connect with the audience and enable stories to be told. And that's why I began learning to model many years ago, and that's why, uh, and those are the qualities that I want to focus on when I'm modeling. 
and I think uh, technology will let us do that. We just have to keep trying. And that's, that's it for me. Thanks, guys.